The first version of a priority queue that I want to write is one that uses an unsorted linked list. Okay, so this is going to store the values in a linked list, but and the values are not sorted in any way. That means that when we go to dequeue, we have to run through and find the thing with the highest priority. So if we start coding this, I'm going to make a new class. I'll call it unsorted uh, LLPQ, sure, for an unsorted linked list priority queue. And it is going to take a type parameter and it extends priority queue with that same type parameter, which should of course make things unhappy. So we're going to come over here, copy those methods, take out the comments for now. We might put some comments in there because there are some interesting things here. This is a going to be based upon a linked list. Um, because we are removing from the middle of the linked list, when we pull things out, it's probably easiest to do this with a doubly linked list with a sentinel. Otherwise, we have to worry about all those special cases with head or tail uh, or we have to, and we have to make sure that we stop our walking. When we find something that's a high priority, we have to somehow stop before we get to it or remember the thing before it. It's just going to be easiest in this case to make it so that our class, and it's not a case class because this is going to have to mutate. Um, actually, I can make, believe I can make the data here a val. I don't think we're going to change it. However, the previous and next, which are nodes, are definitely vars. They're definitely going to be mutating. So we set up our sentinel. As before, I like to call it end. Turns out that name doesn't work real well if you're writing this in C++. Now, Remember, I need a default value for the Sentinel. And in order to create that, I'm going to put up here another private var called default of type A that's equal to underscore. And that creates one for me. OK. Now I need to link my Sentinel in so that it, so that it hugs itself, make its next point to itself, make its previous point to itself, and then I am set up there nicely with an empty doubly linked list, nothing on it. Okay, let's start implementing methods. I have a tendency to start with the easy ones. So is empty. Ooh, how do we check if this is empty? Uh, for previous things where we've used singly linked list, we simply said head was null. And that's not the case here. So how do you know if it's empty? Well, in this case, you know that your doubly linked list is empty if the sentinel points to itself. And we could say ends next is equal to end or ends prev is equal to end. Either way, we should get the same result. Peak and DQ are actually a little bit more challenging. So we're going to hold off on those. NQ, though, is very easy okay? because because we're doing this as an unsorted linked list, it does not matter where we put our new element. So I could put it at the head, I could put it at the tail. It really doesn't matter. If I want to have some semblance of it working like a regular queue, in the case of ties, I'm going to add new things at the tail. So I am going to make a new node, <clears throat> new node, which has the data that I'm adding. Its previous is going to be the Sentinel's previous, and its next is going to be the Sentinel. That way it's kind of positioned in there to be the tail of the list. And then we have to make those pointers point towards it. So first ends previous next points to the new node, and then ends previous points to the new node. And there we go. We've added a new node at the tail. It's fairly simple and straightforward. Should look very similar to what you remember from the append 
in our doubly linked list because that's all it's really doing. What about DQ and PEAK? Well, DQ and PEAK both need to go through and find the highest priority element and then in the case of PEAK, just give back that value. In the case of DQ, we need to remember it, take it out of the list, and give it back. There's some shared functionality here, and I don't want to duplicate code. So I'm actually going to write a helper function, a little private def here, that will be find highest priority node, priority node, and it's going to give us back, as the name implies, a node. Okay, so if we assume that we have that written, well, peak is actually quite easy then. It does find highest priority node dot data. Okay, we find the biggest one, we give it back. DQ will also be easy, assuming we do that. First, we're going to give a name to our highest priority node. Actually, how about we call it HPN for highest priority node. And we'll set, we'll remember that. And then, actually at the end, I can just take HPN.data and give that back. And then we have to make sure we link around HPN. So to link around, I take HPN.prev.next equals HPN.next and hpn.next.prev equals hpn.prev. And there we go. Okay, so that sets the two pointers. They now point around this node. This The, new, the, the highest priority node still uh, points to them, but that doesn't matter. Uh, we're basically, as soon as we return from this method, nothing will point to it, so the garbage collector can come and collect it. So all we have to do is implement this one private method here, and everything will be great. Okay. So find highest priority node. Um, well, we're going to run into a problem here real fast, which is how do we know what the priority is on things? Um, and it turns out that the answer to this is, well, the outside code has to tell us. Because A doesn't necessarily have a, uh, an order to it. Okay? It could be something like a color or a student, where there's no natural ordering on them. So we don't know what is the highest priority unless the outside code tells us. So we're going to pass in an argument here. And for this argument, I am actually just going to make it be, I'll call it high P for high priority, or higher, actually let's go with higher P for higher priority. It takes two arguments of type A and it gives back a boolean. So it'll be true if the first one is higher priority, otherwise it'll be false. Okay. And so what I'm going to do here is I want to run through and find the highest priority node. I could do this with a fold operation but I think that many times students understand it better with a while loop. So I'm going to keep, actually I'm going to keep two values here. Uh, one is the thing that I'm returning and the other one is a rover. And both of these are going to start off as ends next in fact, actually, I'll make the rover start off as rets next. When we're done, I will just give back that return node. And what I have to do is I have to walk through the list. So I'm going to walk through with the rover while rover is not equal to end. We are going to have in here a rover equals rover.next. It's a very important line. If I forget that, we will have an infinite loop because we don't go anywhere. But I need to check if, so if the rover's priority is higher than ret's priority, then I want to forget about ret and remember the rover. So if our, met, our function here is called higher p 
of rovers data if rovers data is higher priority than ret's data then i want to set ret equal to rover i found something new with a higher priority forget about the old thing remember this new thing we walk through the entire list this way and when we're done we will wind up giving back the thing that had the highest priority and there we go now let's do a quick analysis of this uh, remember for our regular queue we had this hard requirement everything had to be order one and we wanted absolutely every method to be order one we cannot do that for the priority queue there's basically there's no implementation of a priority queue where every operation is is order one uh, turns out that kind of in a general sense you can prove that, that that's true you could possibly make some special case priority queues where that's not where you might be able to make everything order one uh, but they won't work in general so what about is empty well is empty is clearly order one it's just doing one comparison in queue is also clearly order one Because all it does is, whoops, not, yeah, the in queue, because all it does, it makes a new node and then links stuff in, okay? One new node, two pointers set, no matter whether there's a million elements or two elements, it does the same amount of work, so it's order one. DQ and peak, though, both call find highest uh, priority node, and that has a while loop that has to walk through the entire list. So if there's a million elements on the list, DQ and peak both have to walk through all one million elements to find the highest priority one. So both of these are order n. And as I said, we cannot get a priority queue where everything is order one. Uh, the implementations we're gonna look at in, in this playlist, everything will either be order one or order n, our improved implementation will get rid of all the order in operations and we'll have order login operations but we can't make everything order one so the implementations we're looking at now kind of have this trade-off the unsorted priority queue has order in DQ and peak and order one in queue and is empty and what we'll see is that if we decide instead to sort it we will kind of flip this around. So it's the in queue that will become order n and the everything else will be order one. We'll see what that looks like uh, later and we'll talk about the implications and which one is probably better as well.